guys we are the equator line in kikorongo in uganda so on my left is the southern hemisphere and on my right is the northern hemisphere the southern hemisphere is a bit cold sorry very quite warm and hot but when i come i'll be going over the other side and showing you uh the northern hemisphere is a bit colder so this is you can see it marked by s at the southern hemisphere and then this is a place called Kikorongo Equator Line Point and the equator line is over here so you can see this equator monument but when I zoom through uh, you're able to see the yellow line and continues that's the equator line now moving going to the northern hemisphere and here is quite cooler and chilled out and it's really cold and you can really feel the difference in the weather between the southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere it's a beautiful place to be and if you're around in uganda come and visit this is in queen elizabeth national park in uganda i'm going to quickly check and show you around and um, they're very very nice vegetation uh, land of natural beauty lakes rivers and very very beautiful place to be lots of tourists here you don't uh, stopping over to take some photographs you don't have to pay anything all you need to do is come over stop take some photographs get some experimentation done for you if you wish and then uh continue with your journey okay so i'm in the southern hemisphere now uh, just crossed from the other side which is the northern hemisphere and i'll be showing you standing between the equator line and you'll be able to again have a chance uh, to see that so this is queen elizabeth national park in uganda and uh, we are at kikorongo equator line point uh, as we say there's lots of tourists here who are stopping over to know to experience the equator in Uganda. You can see some of them here chilling out and having their best life, uh, possibly the first time in this great country. And it did. So, this is the equator line I was talking about, and this line continues over to this point. So, I'm walking the equator line. On my left is the northern hemisphere, on my right is the southern hemisphere and here again the people who are making trying to make some experiments about the water and how uh, I explain to people how all this happens or some of the mysteries or interesting things that happen around the equator thank you for watching uh, it's been Patrick here uh, showing you the equator line so I'm walking now in the equator line uh, it's very hot, very, very hot, and for the weather, my phone, I'm using iPhone, and I've had to do many switch-offs uh, to be able to do this, <coughs> because, uh, uh, as you know, the phone's heat up, and that lets, makes it hard to capture a great video for you. Otherwise, Equator Line in Kikorongo in Uganda. My name is Deus. Yes, I welcome you to Korongo Equator Line Point, right in Queen Elizabeth National okay. Park. So where are you from? Mm, from England. England. Welcome you to Uganda, the part of Africa. Thank you. So at the equator, basically, we demonstrate to you a force called the Coriolis effect that comes because of the Earth's rotation. So Coriolis was a Frenchman who discovered this, and he said, objects attached to the Earth's surface like hurricanes, giant storms, when they are spinning, they spin anti-clockwise in the northern hemisphere. But right here, the water is not attached to the Earth's surface, so this water is going to spin clockwise in the northern hemisphere. So let the vortex form, and we see how the water spins right here. Right there, you notice the leaf turning clockwise? Yes. This tells you you are standing in the northern hemisphere. So still, this is not the only experiment that shows to you the earth rotates. In another, they use the focal pendulum, named after a Frenchman focal. Also when released, it turns clockwise in the north and anti-clockwise in the south. 
but for the focal pendulum it takes 24 hours that's a full day to make a complete revolution you find it around serious science universities and museums around the world so we name this bar well no star because it's a navigation tool for the northern hemisphere this polar star can be seen anywhere in the north but beyond tropic of capricorn in the south it can be seen so we're going to cross the southern hemisphere and we check out the difference So <clears throat> we are in Kikorongo, equator line, and here the equator uh, separates the northern and southern hemisphere. We've just done an experiment in the uh, south northern hemisphere, and now we are crossing over to the northern hemisphere. I will come back to the equator line at some point. Thank you. So right here, I welcome you to the land of the southern cross. So the Southern Cross is a constellation and the constellation is a group of stars making a definite shape. I use this to stabilize the water. So this Southern Cross is evident in Southern Hemisphere countries like Australia and New Zealand. They have it in their national flags to show that the Southern Hemisphere countries. So the vortex is going to form right here and we see how the water spins in the Southern Hemisphere. So right there, you notice the leaf has changed direction and is turning anti-clockwise. This tells you have crossed from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere, where objects are deflected to the left, hence they turn anti-clockwise. Still, the Coriolis effect applies in aeroplanes, bullets, rockets. Aeroplanes in the north, they veer to the right, in the south to the left. It's called the jet stream. Likewise, you shoot a bullet long range, to also right to the north, left the south, it's called the spin drift. For you to hit your target, snipers tell us, you need to know which hemisphere you're in so that you can make a proper trajectory. Even rockets and missiles are launched closer to the equator because at the equator they go straight and faster. That's why some countries like the US has launching stations in Texas and Florida, and for Europe it uses French Guiana in South America because it's closer to the equator. So we are going to end at the center of the world, the equator, and we see what happens right there. Are the guys learning? Yes, we are learning. <laughs> I mean Eric. Now we are at the equator line. As you can see, the ground is marked by the yellow, strong yellow line that goes straight to the equator monument over there. We are at the Koronga equator line point, and that's where we're doing this experimentation on the different uh, what happens when we move from one hemisphere to another. So you all come to the center of the world, the equator. The line was first discovered by the Frenchmen in Ecuador 1700 years ago. Ecuador is a Spanish word for equator, therefore their country is equator. It continues to Colombia and Brazil, that is in South America, in Africa, Sao Tome and Principe, Gabon, Congo, Brazzaville, DRC, Congo, Uganda, Kenya and Somalia, Asia, Maldives, Kiribati, Singapore, Indonesia and Malaysia. In total, it crosses 15 countries around the world. The circumference is 40,077 kilometers. We stand at the line on 21st March or 23rd September. Noon time every year, you can never see your shadow. The sun is directly overhead the equator on those two days, and we call them equinox days. Still at the line, you weigh lighter, 1 kg is of your weight. Centrifugal forces make you lighter at the equator because we are far away from the center of gravity than the pods. So the reason the leaf goes down the drain at the equator without spinning is the same reason the hurricane, the cyclone, the tornadoes, they never cross the equator. They are deflected to the right in the north, left in the south, in the middle bulge is created. Hurricanes only hit countries near the poles where spinning is created. So it's a good idea you stay in Uganda, you can never be hit from hurricanes, so we are safe here. So thank you. That is beautiful. Thanks so much for explanation about the equator uh, line in Uganda and what happens when you cross from the 
Northern Hemisphere to the Southern Hemisphere. A quick question, which one is cold and which one is warmer? Is it the Northern or the Southern Hemisphere? Southern is a bit colder. Mm -hmm. This is warmer. Okay. And what causes the variation in the temperatures then? What causes the change? The change. Now, like we are seated at the bottom of Mount Renzo right there. Yes. Kasese is hotter than Fort Porto. Mm -hmm. Because Fort Porto is on the windward side, here we're on the leeward side. But when you go to the southern, it's more because of the vegetation there. That's why Mbarara receives a variety of rainfall than they do here in Kasese. We are crossed by the equator where the sun is directly hitting the ground. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Do you have any questions here? No, thank you so much and it's been great. Thanks for the explanation. Just a moment. Uh, so this marks the end of our explanation about the equator. Again, I'm showing you the equator line here. So I'm walking through the equator line. I just wait for that motorbike to go over and then I uh, will go back to, to go down to show you the equator line here in Korongo, in Uganda, in Queen Elizabeth National Park and uh, as you see this is the equator monument here at ekikorongo in uganda that i'm taking you towards to see uh, it's quite hot here and uh, as you see this is the monument and to the back of the monument we have well a similar structure replicated of this monument over here you can see over there yes and as i did say previously we are in queen elizabeth national park in uganda at kikorongo equator line the s here symbolizes the southern hemisphere and this is the name of the crossing kikorongo equator line i'm just crossing over from the southern hemisphere to the Northern Hemisphere uh, in Queen Elizabeth National Park over here and very lovely vegetation in this place all around. I'll just show you a bit of this vegetation and then uh, we'll show you again also the location of this place. But yes, this vegetation at the park, very green, very savanna and very beautiful landscape with hills and we have the mountain ranges the Renzo ranges in the back of this uh, equator line over there and this is queen elizabeth national park and over there you can read it says queen elizabeth national park the equator Powered by Tasca, and over there again, there's another. Uh, there's another. <coughs> there's another uh, signpost uh, to show us where we are, which is Queen Elizabeth National Park in Uganda. So this road, if you continue that way, you end up in Bushenyi Barara towards Rwanda, and on this side. Uh, you'll end up with going to Kasese, Fort Porto, and the cross or branch of two as well to the Democratic Republic of Congo. This is Queen Elizabeth National Park. We've just taken this video for you in Uganda. Thank you for watching. Uh, we are in Uganda and here we are crossing the equator again. How we're crossing the equator. Here is the equator point. Let me just show you. We have again the north on the south hemisphere. There you go. Lovely. And there you go. So here I'm standing in the northern hemisphere and to the southern hemisphere. So you spend the whole night guarding this place, eh? Of course. What could go wrong with it? No, people. Some people are not easy here. Mm. But now you put us here. Wow.